How hungry are you? Oh, right now, because I'm dieting and starving, man. To make it, I'm so hungry, man. It's, it's all I want it, so I can see myself then. So if I don't get that, I reckon I'll, it'll be a big downfall. So cause I, I've got my dream sitting at us, what I dream about every night I have since I've been a wee guy. So that means everything to me. Yes, we are back at it at the real life, and this week's guest, yes, I've got him, it's Josh Campbell. How are you doing, brother? I'm good, mate. Cheers for having me on, how are you? I'm very well, very well indeed, mate. So how's life in general? Well, he's gone good, aye, especially if I turn into a pro and that, I can't really grumble. They ain't what I wanted to do. You're 3-0 now. How much are you enjoying the journey so far? Oh, I'm loving it, loving every minute, I think. I didn't expect to like it that much, I don't think, because um, I was a bit off with the amateur period, but now if Loving every minute, uh, even with the training, the fighting, it's just it's not mere every time, mere and mere. Do you feel you're improving each fight every time you jump through those ropes? 100%, man. especially for my, for my debut, I've came on leaps and bounds. Like, you'd think I've had a good few more fights, could be if you saw me in my debut, I didn't box my best. But I think every time as each fight's gone on, I get, like, my confidence is getting bigger. I feel it myself, I feel a lot better training, everything. It's gone absolutely brilliant so far. Well, let's just go back to your last performance. You were absolutely on fire that night. You came into I'm feeling that the place was absolutely <laughs> rocking, brother. Um, how good was that moment for you when you walked out to that crowd? I think, see any other box, I think the best part about it, I think, is the ring walk. It was absolutely brilliant. I think you know yourself, you were there. It was, once that tune comes on, I think I'm going to keep that as a trademark now, because when I walk out, you know yourself, the place goes rocking. It's what a feeling it is, man. It's the, the goosebumps you get for getting it. It is the new here we fucking go, as you say. That's that, right. <laughs> But on a serious note, what would it mean for you to be champion? Oh, it would mean everything, I guess. But I think if every boxer, you're known in the sport to become a champion. I think you have, have to think of what match win this job for because like, every, every boxer wants to be a champion. But to become champion, everything I've dreamed as a wee boy, like, even if you date, date for my mom, date for my pals, but I mean, date for myself, I think it means the absolute world to us. Do you believe you've got what it takes to go all the way? 100%. 100%. I have no doubt about it. I think. They ask other people, no, I don't have a doubt. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be here if I didn't believe in myself. But I, I can make it all the way to the top. It's just when I get the opportunities and take it as it comes. How far do you feel you can go level-wise? I think, deep down, I think I can go world level, 110%. I think it takes obviously that commitment, that dedication and that, but if I believe in myself that I can make it to the top. Is that the ultimate end goal, to be a world champion? 100%, I think it's everybody's end goal, but nah, 100%, I, I'll be there. How quickly do you want to be moved in the game? So I, I thought about this to start with, like when I had my debut and that, like especially after my performance, my debut, I was like, was I ready to turn their pro here and that? But I asked, each, each fight goes on. I think I'm moving at a good pace now, but I'd like opportunities to come a bit faster. Um, I'd like to push myself. I like to test myself. I, I believe that I can start pushing through the ranks and that. So it's just about getting the opportunities to actually go ahead and do it. Which I, when it does come, I'll be there to take. You want this badly, don't you? Oh, big time, mate. I think I wouldn't, I wouldn't be here if I didn't want it, but like really bad, but. Nah, I'm, I'm ready for it, man. You have to have character to excel in this sport. Do you, do you believe you're creating your own path in the game? Aye, I'd like to think so. Aye, I think, I think with the backing and the following that as well that I've got, I think I like, I like proving people wrong. You know I mean, I think, I think this is what I'm here for. This is what I'm here to do. I think it's just, like, as I said, getting those opportunities. Now, but I, I really do think they're in the corner and they're ready to come. You in love with the sport? Oh, big time, I. I think as an amateur, I don't think, I loved it up to a certain point when I got to a stage where you're turning 16, you're going out, you're realising drink, you're getting birds and that, like you're going out on the piss with your pals and stuff. I think at that point, I was bored of boxing, and especially joining the army as well. I think that knocked me back in my amateur like, ranks. So I was like on Team Scotland and stuff, I was going, going away doing things and that with the boxing team. And then once I joined the army, I kind of came after that because I was constantly deployed and stuff. So I think that's when I kind of fell out of love with boxing because I was I was going to experience in parties and that, but I've had that all with my system now. I'm ready to go for it. I've got that itch and love again back for this sport. Was that a difficult time for you back then? Like having to keep yourself away from the drinking, the booze and the women, things like that. How did you keep yourself disciplined through that time? I would say so. Like, it, took a bit, it did take a big knock on me. Like back then, I think being fair where I'm fair that as well. I think we were 
my pals and that at the time, everybody was going out drinking in the parks and stuff like that. And I did get led astray, I did go and I did that on. And I kind of took that step back from boxing, took my foot off the gas. So I think it did play a big part because I chased it, I went out and done it all. So, and I took, I took that step away from boxing, so I chose that of boxing, realistically. Like stupidly, as an amateur what wee guy. When was the turning point then? When did you feel like that was the turning point? What time? I reckon um, once I joined Army and stuff, realised I was a big back guy. I didn't have a lot of self belief in myself. Um, everybody says you've got enough talent in the world, you could you could go far, but I didn't have a self belief in myself. Um, so I think once I joined Army and stuff, I realised how good actual I actual was, and then taking that step back for boxing, maybe having a, a year or two out, and then realising how much I actually did miss the sport. And it, I think that just led me to like, pff, I need to get the finger out. I have to start like, driving again to get back to where I want to be. Especially seeing when I was in like, Scotland team, the boys going out in Norway, international tournaments and stuff like that. And then I had like, Willie Hutchnick going pro, then his thing, got, getting gold medals the worlds. And uh, I think it was a gold medal anyway, then all that. And then looking back at that, I was like, pff, could have been me? You know what I mean? I don't want to be one of the people that turns around and says, I, I could have done it sitting in a pub one day, but I, I think that was, <laughs> that was when. What's keeping you motivated right now? I think. Pff, to get to where I want to be. This is what I do full time now. I guess this is my passion. And it has been since I've been a wee boy. It might have taken me longer to realise that. But now I think it's just passion and then go and what I can achieve in the sport. That's what I want to do. How important is structure in your life? Oh, massively. I think I've got like ADHD in that as well. So I think structure plays a big part. And joining the army at 16 year old, I think that gave me structure. So when I did come out of the army to take up this full time, like, I took a wee step back because if it wasn't for boxing, and God knows where I'd be because having that boxing structure and all in training, I, I know what I'm doing daily, you know what I mean? So it helps me massively, so it does big time. How do you cope with ADHD? Uh, fine, I think my mum, she's learned how to cope with it since I've been a wee guy, so she is, I am like the loud one and all my pals and stuff like that, but my mum's learned to deal with it and I think it plays that much bigger part, just losing focus and that, and a lot of things like, I'll go again for about three, four weeks and then I'll take that step back and I'll, like, I'll go off the nails a wee gear a bit and then, Back home, but since gone pro and stuff like that, it's not really been a problem. Do you feel you've got a lot of discipline in your life now? Oh, massively. I can't thank enough to feel the army because when I was day 14, 15, I wasn't like, had that discipline. I think because I was going out and I was drinking and stuff like that. Um, and I got to take a wee step back for it, didn't I? But they jo I joined the army, like, gained me massively because I can't thank them enough for it. Cause I've instructed, like, especially army structure, guys screaming, screaming in your face, stuff like that. Life's all about challenges, testing yourself, pushing yourself to the limit. Do you feel the bigger the challenge, the better Josh Campbell we will see? 100%. I think I strive after that. You say, I would strive after that pressure. So I would, um, the mere pressure on that, so me, I feel as if, in myself, I need to go out there and actually prove it right. And I've had pressure on that all my life, for doing the job and that, that I did here. So I think it make, brings out the best in me, brings out the best version of myself, which I think I've proved past through my fights now. Would it be fair to say boxing's kept you disciplined? and gave you that resilience and self-belief in yourself? Oh, massively. I, I think it didn't start with, I wouldn't say, um, as I lack confidence in myself, but as I go on and as I progress, I think my confidence should keep building and building and getting higher. And it's scary to see where I'll be in the next few years. I, you truly believe you can go all the way, don't you? I, I probably think so. If I, I didn't, but nah, I don't think I can go all the way. Um, in my head, I can't even see myself going all the way. It's crazy. You live the life? In what sense? The the the, la the booze and things like that. Do you keep that to a limit and things like that? To start with, before I came here professional, once I got to the army, I was talking to me going professional. I think I was going. Out, I was having that fun and that, and I was trying to live the life. But now I've matured. I've grown up. I'm coming for twenty four on that now. And I know if I have all that, then I won't get to where I want to be. I can live that life when I'm world champion. You know what I mean? So I think getting like, oh disciplined now and then live that life when I've retired. Get fat again. <laughs> <laughs> You're signed to the St Andrews Sporting Club yeah. under the guidance of Ian Wilson. How did that all come about, Josh? So, once I was in Afghan, when I actually decided to go a pro, so I used to train with Joe as an amateur. I had a few conversations back and forth while I was out there. Um, and then he was like, right, I'll try and get everything at a place for you, for you coming back. Um, so, it was just about a mission people but to get it all sorted. Once I came back, I uh, had a meeting with Ian Wilson. Um, up at his office and that was the rest of his history. I just had a good conversation, first chat, spoke about the goals and end goals for me, where I want to be and it just went plain sailing so it did and went ahead with it. You got on real well, Wayne? Aye, Wayne's a really good guy, so he's a trustworthy guy as well. Um, 
I think I, met, I knew that for like, the first meeting that with him, and he knew what he wanted from me, and he listened to what I want, what to pro- how I want to progress with my career, and I think we just had it after there. He looks after his fighters, Ian, doesn't he? He does, aye, he does, and that's a good thing about Ian. Um, he cares, like, even when I'm not in camp or that, if I'm not fighting, he'll give me a phone call, he'll be like, how have you been, what you been up to, how's training going, and he's like this and that, just keeps up to date with all his boxers, which is a good bit of report to have for some, like, especially your fighters, you know what I mean? Yeah, some steel, mate, and every person I've spoken to through steel would say great things about you. Aye. Not one person said a bad thing about it. And that goes a long way, especially in boxing. No, you know 100%, I mean? 100%, 100%. Especially, as you say, he's, he's got a cracking stable. It's like you look at the fighters he's got, and that stable and the ones that are coming through as well that have just came out and recently signed. He's, he's got a really good stable. So, what's the plans going forward, Ian? What's he got in mind for you? Looking at a Celtic title maybe after seven or eight fights, or what's the plans that Ian's got for you in mind? Yep, so I've got another. Two fights this year, so I'm looking to be out on the 30th of September and end of November. And I'm hoping early next year I want to be fighting for titles. I want to, don't want to wait back and like, just let them come to me. I want to start pushing for them, saying to them I want to like, go out and get, you know, get the Scottish, get the Celtic and just start progressing for my, my career. So I know I'm ready for it, you know what I mean? So let's just run it back. You're brought up in Craig Dunn. Um, how was your upbringing? Aye, my upbringing was, it was good. So it was, it was, uh, it was me, my mum, my dad. <clears throat> my big brother and my wee brother. Uh, grew up in Creighton, just not far from like, Govan. Uh, it was good up until a certain point. Uh, my dad left, and I think I kind of went off the rails a bit. I think that's when I took that step back for boxing. Went into like, going out fighting, going out drinking, going out parties, doing all that stuff. So I think that's... Uh, but other than that, I had a brilliant upbringing with my mum. She provided everything I wanted, which I got offer. Uh, we're not the most well-off family, but everything... I, I wanted my mum to go out and work like, three jobs to go out and game it. You touched on there that your dad left. How did that affect you mentally and emotionally at such a young age? I think because uh, <clears throat> I still had my big brother, I think emotionally, I didn't let that. I put it in the back of my head, so I did. And I think, well, obviously, when I was growing up and so when I was realising more stuff, I think I, just, I trapped it all in the back of my head. So I think that's when I, I was going out and I was going down the wrong path for fight and I was going out drinking stuff like that, I think that's when it started to come at me. I was acting up, <clears throat> I wasn't being the nicest to my mom, I wasn't being the nicest to my brothers, I was just in my own wee world. Um, but as obviously I got older and matured, I didn't really care about that anyway, it's like that's in the past. I'm obviously looking forward to the future. How tough was that for you when your dad left? It was tough at the point. Uh, it was, I saw my mum happier, but so I did, so that kind of, that helped me a lot because my mum was a lot happier when, when he did leave. Um, so, and I had my big brother on that. My brother's been like a dad me since I've been a wee guy. He taught me boxing, he taught me everything. So, having him, it was like, he was pretty much like my dad figure anyway. So, I think I kind of took away that, that part of it. Uh, but other than that, nah, I was a bit obviously upset than that at the time. But now that I've got all of I was not really fussed up at it anymore. Is there no contact at all your dad now? Is that kind nah, of... so I, I do still see him, uh, still talk to him. Not that close friendship that, like, that really shit that I, you should have with your dad, but... Uh, How do you feel about that? I know he'd make it start with but seeing now that I'm older, if, it's, it's, it's the norm to me, you know what I mean? So if I just take it as it comes, I'm not really too fast. Do you feel you grew up very quickly once your dad left? Uh, I don't know. I think to start with, I think... When I was doing the rang things and that, I, I, I acting out. Just, I think I was looking for attention, acting out. Don't know why, maybe did I think it's because of me, even though it wasn't, but being a young guy, you probably do think that. Um, but, nah, I don't think so. You're very close to your mum. Oh, um, why? She's like my best pal, why? Is it fair to say she's made a lot of sacrifices in her life to get you to where you're at today? Oh, 100%. It was like, before I'd done boxing, it was my big brother, so she used to like, Cut away, go, my big brother used to go away fighting that, and then I'd be, I used to play football, so I'd go, go to football, she'd still make it back, like go to my game to take me to my big brother's fights, and she sacrificed all sorts of games, and my three brothers, my two brothers, the life that we've, like, we've got to now, so I take my hats after her, because I don't think I'd be able to do it, man. She your rock? Oh, 100%. I think most of the part of what I'm doing all this for is a lot to do, do for her, and I mean, I want to give her a better life than that. I want to, everybody would like to put her by the house and put her out of retirement, but I think. One of the main reasons, apart from my doing it for myself, is that I like to make my mum proud and do it for her. Is that what you do this for, you and your family? 100%. I, it's me and my family, I, that's all I do it for. Obviously, there's that big, big part of me that wants to do it for myself, but they see, obviously my brother's a fight night anyway, but 
the, to see what he could have done and all, like, to let him experience it as well and obviously take off for my mum to obviously give her a better life. How proud would your mum be if you became a champion? What would that mean to her? <sighs> that would be crazy. I think my mum might have just came back from Vegas uh, the other week, so she did, and she was in Caesar's Palace and that, and she phoned me when she was there and she was greeting and that. She's asked, I'll be a greeting for her. She's at, uh, it's just because she's at, I've always dreamed about coming here. They've received you, you're a brave fight. She's at, it's been here. She's at, it was actually emotional and that. I said, like, I need to get there and that. I mean, <laughs> I can't even get there. So she's been and starts greeting and that. Perfect with you, innit? Aye, big time. Aye, especially see the raw emotion that she's got. She loves this spot and all. You get mums and that, they go to fights and they can't watch that. She loves it, man. You, you probably saw she sits at the front of the ring, man, getting <laughs> dogs <laughs> abuse. So she does it, and she loves it. What did she say when you came to boxing? What was her initial reaction? No, I want to go to boxing. How did that get down? See, I think it was because my big brother did it. I think she knew about it, obviously, beforehand. Got my big brother's fighting that when he was younger. But how I took a step into it, it was I played football on that, but I was just jealous and my mum got to my big brother's fights. And sometimes when she didn't get a chance to come to my games, I was like, yeah, I'm going to go try this boxing because I was, I was jealous of my big brother. <coughs> Went to boxing, like two weeks later, I had my first fight and realised I was actually half decent at it mm -hmm. and took that transition from football to boxing. Are you close to your brother? I close to both of my brothers. Um, my brother, he stays out in Dubai now. Um, so you didn't visit a lot? I've not been out yet, so I was meant to go and I came back to Afghan with COVID and that, so my flights got cancelled, but I'm um, Probably I'm going to by the uh, end of November after my next fight. Uh, perfect uh, timing, isn't it? Perfect timing. Party time. Uh, so I'm going for a week or two. Enjoy live, live life out there for a wee bit. Love <laughs> <laughs> like a king. How did you go into school? Oh, terrible at school. Um, wasn't really. No, that was the bright side. I just didn't try. I like, played a lot with my ADHD in that as well. Uh, just a class clown, you know what I mean? I was good going, I'd make people laugh. I'd go into school, make people laugh, get the troubles off teachers. I'd go in and just fight with people. and get suspended or just a wee terror so I was one. Did you lack a bit of maturity back then do you feel? Oh big time I think, I think, um, I think everybody at age sort of does but uh, I did a lot like even with primary you got out of high school I just didn't care I was in all the lower classes and that I left school just before we went out into third year actually uh, fourth year because I was out fighting and stuff like that so I think that's also what that helped me big time. You feel you lacked a bit of guidance back then obviously with your mum and dad splitting up and things kind of, kind of spiralled out of control back then when you were young? I think it could hurt parts to play in that eye, but I, I had my big brother, he matured really quickly, so he did when it happened, so he matured a lot quicker, so he, he took on the responsibility to help my mum look after me and my big brother. It was, I was like, he was only about, about 10, 11 at the time or something, so he became obviously a, a dad to the both of us. You're a very close family, I take it, yeah? Aye, I would say so, I big time, like, I think, we had a lot of, like, our, our People, like a few people that I know, like with their, their wider families on that, I would say, look, like, we're our closest, only three years, you know what I mean? So we, we try and stay as tight as possible. You joined the army at 16. Um, how did that all come about? <laughs> so so I left school uh, in fourth year, just for a week fourth year, and I've got two of my best pals, <coughs> Mick and Ali. They were, they were like, oh, I'm going to go and do this. But I mean, we've got to get a bash, we've got to try it out. I was like, nah, no for me, I was like, no chances. I'm not going to wait to get shouted at people because. I, I lacked discipline at that game. I didn't like getting being told what to do. I was like, no chance, that's not for me. Uh, they both joined. They, they go to a place in Glen Coast to do your selection for them, like your fitness test, your stuff like that. Um, one of my pals, Ali, didn't get anxious, had a heart condition. Uh, so my pal Mick, he was going down his cell. Um, and he moved into Leeds and had like, a place called Harrogate uh, for like a year for basic training. And we went down. Well, he, that's where he was getting sent. It was like, I remember it was like three days before Christmas. Please just go down that. He's like, I want to date that. And I was like, no chance. He's like, just sign up, see if you get accepted to that. I sign up, go down for the fitness test. I was like, if I don't do that, but they will. I'm not going down. Obviously, me being fit, playing football, got any boxing, that smashed the fitness test out of the park. <laughs> and next thing you know, like, I said, are we doing south in two months? I was like, I tell man, I was like, no chance, man. What was the reason of uh, joining the army? What was behind it all? Uh, to be honest, I only done it because. My pals done it. I think my group of pals were so close to me. Like, if somebody says jump off that bridge, you're jumping after them. So, yeah. Um, I think the main reason just because they two joined. But when I went down, I hated it as well. As soon as I went down, through basic training, it was like a good laughing at cause you're 16 year old, you're running about leads and that, and trying to get into pubs and stuff like that. It was, it was a good <laughs> laugh, man, like all your pals. But um, I hated it start with it, was it? So, I went into like actual finished basic training, went into like your actual unit you get deployed to. That's when I actually started to enjoy it. And 
I, I did like it. I think only downfall is it's, it played a massive part in my boxing, so I didn't get I got held back a few years, I'd say. Do you feel it's gave you that inner strength and courage you need in your life? Oh, 100%. I think it's... You grow up fast when you join the army. But then there are 16-year-olds living yourself, you know what I mean? Like, like there's a, a horror of 16-year-olds getting shouted at, getting told what you're doing, the training that, it revolves in that, because potentially you could have been got to war or this or that. So you, you grow up fast when you're doing... You have, you have to grow up fast, you're flung in the deep end, you know what I mean? So I think that matured me. Gave me a lot more confidence about myself and yeah, it did build me into a person that I'm other day, 100%. It made you the man that you are today? I would the say. Life lessons? I would say so, a lot of life lessons for the army. So. What do you mean by that? Tell me some of the life lessons that you learned. Life lessons is just one, how to look after yourself. When you're down there, you know how you have to do all your own washing, doing your own cooking. You have to do, you know, with your mum, I mean, don't get me wrong, to start with. Me and my pal Mick were on the phone with my mum and his mum, like, how do you work a washing machine and then you know how to cook? I think the thing we made for about a good year solid was tuna pasta, so it was, because that's the only thing we knew how to cook, it was, it was horrible, but you learn all life skills like that, and then obviously got it to, when got it to Iraq and Afghanistan, that, and that matures you obviously a bit more, but it's it taught me a lot of life lessons. How was your time in Afghanistan? It was, it was good, so Afghanistan isn't as bad as obviously what it was back in like, the Herrick Walls and stuff like that. Obviously you've still got that threat out there and you've still got the dangers and everything else, but so it's but once you, you fire it, it's an eerie, eerie country, you know what I mean? It was an old war zone, so um, aye, it's, it's an eerie place and it's you're always on edge, you know what I mean? You're always, because you never know what can happen, you always need to stay ready, you know what I mean? Just in case something does happen. What was your role there? So, as I joined the army, we were infantry front lines, so we were front line soldiers, uh, but out there our role was guardian angel, so I think the engineers and stuff are teaching the Afghan army, like, our drills and like, stuff like that because obviously at that point that's when the Taliban were planning on taking air so we were teaching them all the drills and stuff so we were guarding angels so we would stand in between lessons and that and in case someone would say put out an AK or put, try to disturb something so we can escalate it get the higher ranks that way into the armoured vehicles and get them out. Did you have any confrontation with the Taliban or that when you were there? No, no, not at all. Um, now and then you'd have what, the, the science not going on in case of like, a, a, a bomb scare or stuff like that. Uh, but other than that, uh, no. Nah. What have you learned from that whole experience in Afghanistan? Um, grew me up, it taught me, I'd say, oh, <laughs> to say always be on edge, but always take things dead careful. Like, it's hard to explain. Um, it teaches you hard, it's hard to... Well, I'll, words, I'll put some for me. How important was that for you to go to Afghan at that stage in your life? I think... Um, I don't know, I wouldn't say it was important to me to go, so I'd done a rack first, I'd done a rack, a rack just after my 18th birthday. Like, that was the most scariest one, so it was, because just turning 18, going to earth first time away, and the stories you hear of a rack, the, like, the movies that you're watching it and stuff, I think nothing can keep, like, get you ready to go earlier, so it kind of, like, mentally, it can't, nothing can prepare you, even though you do all this training and stuff like that, but deep down, nobody in their right minds but mentally prepared to go earlier, so it's how you take it. Um, <clears throat> but I ain't going early at 18, that, that grew me up big time. So when it came to Afghan, I was Merlin mentally prepared and well, Merlin ready with all drills and stuff like that. So I think going early, I think this for the second time especially, I think it was it was easier than the first. Has it made you a confident person? I would say so. I think I'm no scared of like, walking out to her ring now is nothing very is getting off that plane when you're going earlier. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, when you're going over there. But... It's, it's gave me that confidence that nothing, nothing's, nothing, nothing scares me. So obviously everybody's got like, scared of something, but uh, took away that nerves and that, that I used to get for certain things and that. I think it's hard to get me nervous or hard to get me actual scared. Or... How much have you implemented that kind of mental status and courage from Afghanistan into boxing? Mm, I would say, for, for instance, when I was younger, like <clears throat> going to a ring walk, I used to get really, really bad nerves. So I did like, for a ring walk. I remember the British finals. My big brother had a wet towel in my head and I was sitting on the edge of a chair. I shit myself as well as I was petrified. Um, and then, obviously now when it comes to ring walks, I buzz for it now. It's like, obviously, as I said earlier, that's your favourite part. It's my favourite part's the ring walk. Going out and <laughs> just embracing it all, the crowd soaking it on. So I think it gave me that confidence and that courage to actually put it all behind me and actually go out and enjoy that moment. How much has your life changed since you left the army? Massively, so I think 
I took that toll for <coughs> getting a big wage and stuff for the army, especially since I'd be 16 year old, um, coming out. And obviously, I got out just before I had my f pro debut. I uh, just before my pro debut, so uh, my plan was obviously to get a job and then work around that. But I've been mean, lucky enough with sponsors and stuff like that where I could go full time um, and chase that dream that I've actually wanted. So, uh, what was the main reason for leaving there? Was it a case of you'd done your time? It was time to move on. Was that the case? I I would say so. Cause it came to the last two years. I'd say before I went to Afghan, I, I just wasn't enjoying it anymore. I was going through it in but it's time Monday to Friday. I was bored. I was. Fed up actually. I like changing my life so I do. That's what I like about boss. It gives me change. Every day is a different session, stuff like that. Feels like we're just doing the same thing over and over. Falling out of love with the job. Um, and then obviously once I was over in Afghan, I was looking back and I was seeing like boys I knew turning air, going professional or doing this and doing that with boxing. I hurt my heart. So it did. I think it was like four weeks before I flew home, five weeks before I flew home. And it just hurt my heart. And I was like, I need to go pro. I was got to come back and have a few more amateur fights. but in my head, if I want to do something, if I've got something in my head, I'm doing it. And I just got my head, look, I want to go pro. I got the ball moving so fast with it. Um, and then that's all fell into place for me. So what brought Josh Campbell to boxing? Well, how why did I start it? <coughs> my big brother. <laughs> my big brother, he used to do boxing stuff, but I used to like, go to the back and spar with him. He used to put gloves on me and just punch me up in the back girl inside. So <laughs> uh, and then... Obviously, being jealous of watching, going, watching his fights and stuff, uh, I'd go back, just told my mum one day, I was like, look, I want to go into boxing, see if I enjoy it and that. She's like, right, let's go. And I went in and did it after my first year. I was like, made the Scotland team and I was going away on trips and stuff. And I think I just fell in love with it for then. Good times? Oh, brilliant times. I think I just wish when I was younger, I pushed it a bit more instead of, obviously, that. Oh, yeah, Take right. a year or two after that. I would like to see where I would have been there, but I'm still, I'm still here. I'm still chasing it, and I know I'll get to where I want to be eventually. Is it a case of trust in the process, and you know, then knowing you'll become a champion? Aye, that's. I think it's obviously don't rush myself too much in it. I, I know what I'm capable of. I, I know what I can do. So maybe in my head I might be rushing it a bit too much, but if that opportunity comes, I'm ready, and I know I'll be 100 percent ready. Especially with having Joe Hart in my corner and the stable that the boys have got around me. Like if maybe in my corner, I know. But I'm good to go. Did the boxing come natural to you? It did, aye. It, was, um, it did come natural. It's like surprisingly, as I said, when, once I joined, I think the space of two weeks, I had my first fight, so I did. And uh, I was a film of putting that, but it came so naturally. Like, people ask me, how did you get so good in that? But if I think back it, I can't remember how I'd done it and how I even learned this stuff. I think it just, a lot of things come natural to me, especially with sports and stuff. I'm just one of the well, good, well, good orientated around sports, um, so it like, did come natural to me. Like. Boxing being your education? Oh, big time. Aye. I feel as if the effort that, that if I put the effort that I put into boxing that, then I put into my schoolwork, I'd, I could be something. I could be something big, <laughs> make a lot more money than you. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> um, when did you realise that you were you were good at this? I reckon I was when obviously I was. I knew I was. Well, I knew people were saying I was good at when I was younger. Um, I think it was when I started winning, say, Western District titles, Scottish titles, stuff like that. And then got into the Scotland team, and I think it was someone going to the Scotland team after like my first year, second year or something. And I think after that, I realised I was like, I'm actually half decent at this. My big brother would always tell me, he's like, look, you've got the talent to go so far, it's just, you're lazy. Like, you don't want to train, you don't want to do this, you don't want to do that. And at the time, I didn't really care. Um, and then, obviously, when I started getting older, realising I needed to train for fights because I... I didn't have that, that energy I did when I was younger. Um, I think then I realised, look, I've got potential here to go as far as like myself could stop me if I got on, so. How hungry are you? Oh, right now, because I'm dieting, starving, man. To make it, I'm so hungry, man. It's, it's all I want it, so I can see myself doing. So if I don't get that, I reckon I'll, it'll be a big downfall. So cause I've, I've got my dreams sitting at us, what I dream about. Every night I have since I've been a wee guy, so that's means everything to me. What takes your mind off things? What do you do outside the boxing? So I, I, I'm close with my pals, so I've got a good close group with my pals. Um, we do a lot of things, man. We go watch a football. Like, I'm a big Rangers fan summer, so I've got a season ticket now. I go there most weekends, uh, spend time with my pals, and just go for something to eat when I'm allowed to, isn't it? What's your favourite scan? 
Oof, that's a tough one, man. I love a good Italian, but if it's after a fight, I'm going all out. I'm going munchy box a lot. So I'm <laughs> munchy box and Chinese the same night. <laughs> uh, see, the thing is, man, the things are great, but see next day, you think somebody, somebody's ripped your tongue out in your lap. Uh, oh, it's, oh, it's the snap it? your carpet throat. So it is. <laughs> no, after, even like, see if like, a week after like, my fight camp, like, like, well, after my fight, if I'm not in camp, even when I'm eating, I feel guilty eating stuff, and it's so annoying, man. She just want to enjoy it, but after it, you're like, oh, should I be going out? I don't even know you got a week after or something. It's horrible. What's your cheat meal? A cheat meals. You're in camp. When I'm in camp. That you're allowed. I don't really have cheat meals, so I don't. I've got um so I'm sponsored off Kyle's meals prep. So they do like they do like waffles and pancakes and stuff like that. It stops me from eating like a lot of sugary stuff. And I'm not a big sweet guy so I'm also I don't like people going my way to eat chocolate and that. I'm not a big fan. I need to be right in the mood for chocolate. So I don't really have a certain cheat meal because with my like, meal preps and stuff, I've got like my calories and that are alright when I, I can have a waffle or pancakes and that because of the strawberries and stuff like that. Diet's huge in boxing. Oh, it's massive. Like you need to look after yourself, you need to do the right things, you need to put the right things in your mouth. Um, but diet and boxing, it's like the west of Scotland, mate. They all eat kebabs, fish, and <laughs> things like that. It's so difficult not to twist away. And it's, it's everywhere you walk, you've got a kebab shop on yeah. every street. So you know, Tanning shops, kebab shops, <laughs> bed shops. <isn't> it? <laughs> it's I mean, it's, uh, but um, just touching back on uh, your amateur career you spoke briefly about there, tell us a wee bit about your record. My record is a. F- I am a record, I think I had. I think it was 40, 43 or 43 off to 46 uh, fights. I think I had seven defeats. So I, did. I won, uh, I think it was three or four Western districts. Uh, Scottish titles, got a silver in the British. Uh, army champion, uh, won the army at individuals. I got selected for the army team, but I didn't go down because I wanted to go to Iraq. Because if I go to the army, then I wanted to have a medal. Something I can look back and say, look, I've done this with my time in the army. Uh, well, I've had a good championship snap by my belt, eh? Who's the best you faced in amateurs? In the amateurs, eh... Uh, I boxed a good boy in the British semis, eh, uh, British finals I did. I can't remember his name, but... He was just, he was a South, awkward southpaw as well, the same as me, and it was just a chess game, so it was. It was he was a big, tall, like, lanky boy, so he was, and I was, I was small, so I was, and I'd be tiny the arms. It was, <laughs> that was a hard fight, remembering back at that, but... Even in army championships, I know, um, I got a good boy, I think, I boxed it way above, because uh, there was no doing it my weight at elites. So I weighed in it, I think it was at like 68 kilo, and the boy weighed in it, I think it was at like 75, so he did. Got to go ahead, so I think it was the, the strength in that at the time, and that, that was that was a tough fight, so it was. How did you find the difference from amateur to pro? I prefer it, so I, do. I think it's, as, as an amateur, you're just, you're so rushed, aren't you, in the, the three minute rounds, you're just going to try to get scored by, you know? going in, you're just, you're just a scrap, so it is, but in the pros, you're, you sit back, you get to take your shots, you get to showcase your talent and your skills. So, you do, I think it suits me to a T. So, I think it's, after my first fight, it was hard getting used to. Um, don't get me wrong, because it does take it out. You may run with the smaller gloves and you feel the weight behind the punches. You're fighting men, realistically. Uh, but, nah, I prefer it so much better. So, you actually get to go out and, and show, showcase what, you're, what you can potential. They say in boxing, the only thing you can't train is a heart. How big is yours? Oh, if I'm willing to put it on, leave it on in the line somewhere. I'm, I, I, could, I can admit back then, maybe my heart was not as big, but now, because I, I know what I want and what my end result, my end goal has got to be, I, I've got a massive heart. I, I'm ready to leave everything out there. You're focused on that, aren't you? Ah, big time. My head, so is, I can't get it out of my head. So sometimes I wish I could because it drives me crazy. And But nah, it's, I've got to stop until I get there. So you turned pro 25th of November 2021. How proud the moment was that for you, but also for your mum and your brother as well? Oh, it was massive. Unfortunately, my big brother's not had the chance because of COVID and stuff that to get over to one of my fights yet, which is bad. But I live stream on my fights on Facebook and I set up my group for him so you can watch them. So it'd be good to get them there. But for my mum, especially after my fun, first fight, oh, she was in tears and that. So she was like, the next day, like, I went for a drink that after I came back the next day and she already had like big posters made up. Like, Photo frames that with all the photos for the night before and everything all the house in the wall and stuff like that. So it's it's crazy. She that's, loves it. That's powerful way for you. Aye, mm-hmm. big time. No matter it means to harm. But the, the belief in that she has in me could let make anybody drive to anybody any of their goals, you know what I mean? You touched on Joe Hamiller on the man who you're under the tutelage of. Um how good is Joe? Oh Joe's look at the boys in the stable man, Joe's absolutely fantastic. So he is Especially how he is with us and that as well. And he trains us all so hard in the knowledge and understanding he's got the game and that as well. It's Joe's brilliant, so he's brilliant with every single one of What have you learned to Joe, not only in boxing, but as a person? 
I'd say if he's helped us, he, Joe's helped us massively, man. I get, when it came to it as well, like, get, especially get me back into, into boxing. I mean, he, he got all this ball rolling for me to go pro, so he did. He set up the meetings with Ian and he got me back into the gym. Like, I came back from Afghanistan, I think it was 85 kilos, so I did, and he got me all the way back down to fighting weight and got me to fall back in love with the sport, so he did 100%. Does Joe go above and beyond for you? He goes above and beyond for all the boys, so he does, man. Like the stuff he does behind the scenes now, especially, and he works, you know what I mean? He works night shifts and that. He comes in like, early in the morning, comes back for work and trains and everything like that, you know what I mean? So he goes above and beyond. Did he, did he click straight away, you and Joe? Aye, so I went with him when I was younger, before I joined the army. I had my last uh, fight before I joined the army with Joe. Um, so I've known him since I think I was about 14 year old or something, so I've always been that close. Close connection to Joe, aye. What have you learned with Joe so far in the game of boxing? Just, it, it took me for that amateur style. Like, my amateur style was a bit bouncy. I was all over the place I was. Um, he's took me for that. He's got my feet grounded. So he has, man, he's gave me my, like, sorted my pro style and he's just got me like, to like, suit the professional ranks. Yeah, to I swear, like with Joe Ham, he's very professional. He's very laid back. He, he, he soaks it all in. He, he can see what's right in front of him. He never panics, that's one thing. Nah, he's so calm and collect so he is, and I think that takes a toll on us as well. We see us seeing him calm and that, and no other place than that, it just be, makes us obviously, but make anybody calm if your coach and your trainers are calm, you know what I mean? It's a cracking stable. Aye. Regan, Nathaniel, yourself, young Joe, he's bounced off each other. Aye, we all do, so we've got Elliot as well, we've got, got a good tight group, so we'll, we'll, whoever's fighting, we'll all go down and watch the fights, we'll, we're all back at each other, so we do. It's a, it's a good, like, close net of boys that we've got. I'm a, I'm a big Regan fan, Nathaniel, yourself. So these are all a cracking lads, but one fight I'd like to touch on was a, well, I hope <coughs> this happened in the near future, is Nathaniel Collins versus Nick Paul, one word, Sizzler. Ah, it's, I think it's a fan favourite, and I think everybody wants to see that fight. It's the clash of styles. You've got Nathaniel, this skillful, artful boxer. You've got Nick Ball, this kid that wants to take your head clean off. Aye. Um, how much are you looking forward to see that fight if it does happen in the near future? Oh, absolutely buzzing to see. I think every boxing fan, I mean, as a boxing fan before I was a boxer, I think every fan wants to see that and it would be a brilliant fight. I think Nathaniel's style, you know how good you're saying Nathaniel's man, his style's just got on, so he is, he's tricky. Um, oh, I'm buzzing to see that. I think, to be honest, I think Nathaniel boxes him, schools him, sort of. How does Nathaniel approach that fight? Because it's an absolute spellbinder. I think the thing was with the fight, I think how he approaches every fight, I think he was just on him 10% into everything, you know what I mean? He's the great determination, he wants it, you know what I mean? And, and you know, it's like the fight, what he's won so far, it's unbelievable. I think as he gets in to see how much he wants it, he's got to go and take it, which I highly believe he's got to do. Do you feel he's a world champion in the making? <clears throat> 100%, if it's not in the next year or two, I, I do think he'll be there. I think, well, that's what I'm I think he'll be there in the next year or two, 100%. Nothing's stopping him, he's got the skill, he's got the talent to take it, so he does. I was very impressed with Egan Glack in his last fight as well. He had to go to the well, but he dug deep in that, showed heart. Yep. And he'll learn so much from that fight, he'll kick on. How do you see Regan progress in his career? Regan's smashing it as well, you know what I mean? I think he's due for a title soon. He's, the, the, hard, the hard work he puts into his fights and into his camps and that as well, it's, it doesn't go unnoticed. He's probably one of the fittest out there. And he's a brilliant boxer as well, I think. He'll be soon until he gets his shot, and once he does get it, he's taking it. Really knocking on the door, isn't he? Ah, he's, he's scratching it, man. It's there, so it is, I think. There's no the next fight or run after that, but it's coming. They will take it. And, he, and we need to speak about Josh Taylor, um, Jack Cattle, Aye. the rematch. Mate, this is going to be an absolute cracker. Mm. I feel this could be an absolute classic. It's just what's all on the line. How does Josh Taylor approach this fight? I think he's got a lot to prove, doesn't he? He's got a lot of... Doubters to shut up, so he does a lot of keyboard gangsters out there. That if, obviously, for the first fight, it was, the decision was a bit iffy, but I think he's got a lot of people to shut up, did not he? So I think he's got to go out there and I, will, I think he will take it. <clears throat> Do you feel Josh Taylor has to be ruthless in this fight and try and take this man's head off and get him out of there early because the weight might be an issue? He can approach it that way, man, but I think if, I think, I think, the way he's put it across now as well, they'd like, yeah, sure, that got to him and stuff. Obviously, his first home fight and how many years and stuff like that. But I think he could do both. He could go out there and he could absolutely take a hit after Jack Catterall. Or I think he could go out and outbox him and school him and show him how good he is in, compared, in comparison. You know what I mean? 
It just wasn't the best Josh Taylor that night. And Josh is such, he's so sharp. He takes a toll at his opponent, mixing that up body and head. Yep. He's a fantastic fighter, arguably Scotland's greatest. Yep. Um, but I just felt in that fight, every time Josh got in close, Jack was cutting down his punching space. And that might be down to weight issues and things like that. Uh, Josh no been sharp. Um, how, how do you see this fight playing out early? Do you think Josh will get into a rhythm and take over as it goes to the middle to the end of the fight? Or how do you see it going? Personally, I think he's just got, I think he's got to go out and he's, I think he's just got to school him. I think he's, he's got that to prove everybody wrong and sh shut the haters up. I think he's just got to go out and put on an absolute masterclass performance and box the heat off him. So there. Everybody thought he was going to do the first fight, but obviously, as you say, he wasn't the best Josh Taylor we've seen. I think it's the worst he's ever, I think anybody's ever saw him. I think he's just got all that to, to prove now because he knows what he could do. And before that, like, everybody knows he could outbox him. He's, I think he's got to go out and just do that. Well, it's Scotland versus England. Excuse me, French. It. Let's fucking have it. <laughs> <laughs> fucking right, man. <laughs> See, but anything, it's been a pleasure talking to you today, Josh, and I wish you nothing but health and success and happiness in the future. I'm going to leave the stage with you. Anything you'd like to add? Uh, no, nah, just 30th of September. I'm going to be able to tune in and get behind me in this one. So it's got to be massive. Thank you so much for your time. Cheers for having me on, mate. Thank you. Cheers, mate.